A lot of you might remember Boneworks, one of the more memorable games in the VR space. With the previous game having been received with such acclaim, can its sequel possibly live up to its predecessor? Mac, she's the host, and today we're reviewing Bone Labs. So much like Boneworks, Bone Labs isn't very story heavy, telling the story in a more indirect way through radio broadcasts, clipboards, or graffiti. From what I understand from it, you're some guy who's a part of some fantasy medieval village simulation who manages to survive being hanged. Uh, you escape through a dungeon learning of a group of disgruntled game developers who feel that the corporation who oversees the VR simulation thing, they feel that they aren't using it to its fullest potential and have formed a rogue group to, I guess, do their own thing. They call themselves Lava Gang, and I think it's meant to be some sort of meta storytelling device where it's like Lava Gang is actually real and it's meant to represent the game's modding community, and it's intended that you, the person playing the game, not the character you're playing as, become a part of this rogue group. Maybe not the most faithful retelling of the story, but yeah. The physics system, which is of course the main selling point of the Bone franchise, if you'd like to call it that, does remain in place. Everything from normal objects, guns, melee weapons, and even NPCs have weight to them, meaning that they have to be handled in certain ways to be used as intended. For example, sledgehammers are quite hefty and sluggish, so you can't really just go ham with them, you kind of have to move in the same way you would as if you were using a sledgehammer in real life. Engaging NPCs can also be done in a variety of ways. They can be pushed, grabbed, swept off their feet, and a lot of other stuff, so they end up being pretty fun to fight. Gunplay is as good as it really needs to be, and melee combat is uh, pretty fun. Although the enemies flail around a lot, so that's when things kind of get a little frustrating if you're going for the whole melee, hand-to-hand -hand play style. Something else of note is the delay between when you push your joystick up and when you actually start moving. I swear, there's like a full second between when you push your joystick up and when you actually start moving. And it makes the game feel incredibly unresponsive, unimmersive, and unnatural. This wasn't a problem in Bone Works, so I have to assume that this design was intense intentional, but it's like why? I think comparing the mechanics, the general gameplay of Bone Labs to its predecessor Bone Works, weirdly enough, I think I prefer Bone Works. There's nothing necessarily wrong with Bone Labs for the most part, but everything from moving, climbing, gunplay, melee, it just feels a hair smoother in Bone Works. I think they tried to tweak their system and refine it here, but I think overall it was for the worse. The story mode really isn't anything to write home about. If you played Boneworks, it's kind of the same thing. Kill enemies, complete puzzles, make it to the end of the map. Levels are meant to be part linear, part sandbox, giving you a lot of freedom to move about the map and complete it in your own sort of way. That being said, the levels feel much less open-ended and memorable than its predecessor. I feel like Boneworks gave the player a lot of opportunity to poke around the map, look for nooks and crannies to explore, right? But in this game, everything feels linear and restrictive. It's just really disappointing level design. For the first, I'd say, four hours of the story, the game's mostly just moving along with the campaign, pretty typical stuff. But after this really poorly designed minecart turret level thing, you run into this giant radio person and he's like, Ooh, you need to collect these avatars for some reason, and it just transitions into this weird series of mini-games. It's meant to introduce the game's avatars that you can switch through to change up play styles, but it just felt like a really unnatural way to introduce the system. It felt like the game was coming to a screeching halt to completely change direction. A direction that I'm not even sure if the game itself knew where it was really going with. It's just kind of random bullshit go. One map, you're this muscular guy punching your way through security guards, then you're this sci-fi ninja girl jumping from place to place with this helicopter shooting at you. Then then you're this big fat dude trying to protect some sort of crystal. In another map, you're this succubus maid driving around this just absolutely nauseating go-kart track. Then you're playing as a bingus in a spacesuit in some zero gravity moon level. And then there's this tall giant guy who's climbing up on some pillar. Every time the level changes to introduce a new avatar, it just gets progressively dumber with how it does so. It feels completely out of place, especially since the avatars and the play styles that come with them really don't get utilized within the story mode or really the game as a whole. The game introduces this new mechanic that it calls a body log, basically allowing you to switch between avatars on the fly. And for what it's worth, there seems to be a lot of attention to detail with the avatars. Certain avatars can handle weapon recoil better, others can wield melee weapons or engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat more effectively. Now, some are fast, some are slow. If you choose a smaller avatar, the world seemingly gets bigger around you. It's really interesting stuff, but again, the game does absolutely nothing with it. When you're finished with the, again, 
painfully out of place minigames, you return to the normally structured campaign for about an hour before the game reaches its finale, which is not nearly enough time to really do anything with this new avatar switching mechanic. Now, don't get me wrong, it does do it to an extent, like having a switch to the heavy avatar be strong enough to move around a boulder, or switching to a smaller avatar to fit an event, which that's a start, but not really enough to make it stand out as a feature. I mean, let's be honest here, LEGO games have been doing this for quite some time now. So what I think is going to end up happening for most people is they're just going to stick with the avatar that they like the most because the game never really shows that switching between them is a more effective way to play the game. I don't know whether to call it a novelty or a gimmick. Now, that being said, it's the sort of thing where I think the game's better off with it. It's pretty out of the way, so it ends up being a thing where if you like it, it's there, but if you don't, it's out of the way enough so that it won't annoy you. But I feel like if you're going to extensively showcase this mechanic in ads and trailers, well, the gameplay should probably reflect that, otherwise it comes off as incredibly misleading. And on a note with the avatars, just a completely subjective opinion that won't reflect on our final thoughts, because in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. You can probably tell that there's a bit of fan service going on with this game. And if you know us, you know that we genuinely don't have a problem with that sort of thing. A little bit of naughty old fun, right? We don't have a problem with it, when it fits. In a game like Bone Labs, this stuff just feels really out of place, it feels forced, and it's pretty obvious the developers only did it to pander to the weirder sections of the VR chat community. Okay, and yeah, I'll admit, you know, in the gameplay footage, we're using the ninja girl, but that's only because we like her stats. Anyways, let's talk about the side content that this game has to offer. The pickings are quite slim. Half of what the game has on offer can best be described as throwaway minigames. There's the parkour maps where you're jumping over gaps and weaving through obstacles to make it to the end as quickly as possible. In the tag trial maps, you're running through a bunch of rooms to kill enemies as fast as possible. For what they were, they're fun, but overall they're disposable and unimpressive, and will likely not hold your interest for very long. Obviously, there are the sandbox maps, where you're pretty much just left to mess with what the game gives you. You can spawn whatever weapons and NPCs you want and toy around to your heart's content. It's really everything that a sandbox should be. There are, of course, the arena maps that center on showcasing combat. There's a map where you're put in a coliseum and can play a variety of modes, there's trials with specific challenges like kill enemies with only a specific type of weapon. There's also different coliseum layouts for variety. There's also the container yard coming in with just two modes. There's a mode where you have to power a machine by filling up a battery with void juice found throughout the map. When you put the battery in a machine, it will begin to harvest the void juice and you have to prevent an oncoming onslaught of enemies from disrupting the process. Take the battery back to a machine, charge it up, do that like three times, and you win. There's also an endless survival mode where you have to fight off enemies for as long as you possibly can, which more often than not tends to be as long as you really want, because I'm pretty sure the game has a spawn limit, so you never really get overrun. The game will more often than not end because you decided to end it yourself, as opposed to it ending because things just got too much to handle. Indeed, these two maps might be familiar to veterans of Boneworks because they're pretty much the same concepts taken straight from it. I don't think it reflects too well on your game when its most notable aspects are ripped straight from its predecessor. Okay, well there is one other map, it's really boring, it's this close quarters map with a lot of verticality, you have to fend off enemies for as long as possible, nothing special. Overall, I'd say that the arena maps are fun. Their modes centered around combat, and the combat in this game is really fun, so it works out in the end. I just wish that they had something more original to offer, instead of basically just replicating the maps from the first game. So yeah, the bonus content on offer is not impressive at all. Mostly just throwaway minigames and game modes ripped straight from Boneworks. But the game does have something of a saving grace, which are the mods. From what I understand, while Boneworks was a game that could be modded, Bone Labs was specific designed for it. There was an SDK that was specifically designed for the game, which I really can't comment on the quality of because we here at Jetavision really aren't into that kind of stuff. Regardless, while the game doesn't have a Steam Workshop page, installing mods is quite simple. It's really just a matter of going to its ModDB page, saving it to the mods folder, and unzipping the files within them. The modding scene remains pretty active as of the making of this video, with a plethora of different mods available and a few of them coming out a day. These range from different avatars, guns, vehicles, and even entire maps. However, in my opinion, the mods really don't save the game. A lot of them are fun to tinker and experiment with, but that's really all you can do. Most of the maps that you can download are just sandboxes where you really have to create your own fun, which for some people might be fine, but I think a lot of people are going to kind of tinker around with the system and they're going to think, yeah, toying around with these new objects and guns and spawnables and all that, it's fun, but how can this translate into actual gameplay? I think what most people are going to want are actual levels, things to do, objectives to complete, make it from start to finish. And 
And yeah, there are mod maps that are pretty campaign-like, but they're short-lived and pretty unimpressive at that. Don't get me wrong, there are definitely some notable maps and mods. I'm sure many in the comments are going to point that out, but clearly they're few and far in between. I don't want to dig at the game's modding community, especially since I've heard about how limited the development tools are, but I'm making note of it because these reviews are about providing as much information to the viewer as possible, and when a game that's supposedly carried by community mods doesn't have very good community mods, kind of something that I have to bring up. And honestly, I don't even hold the modding community at fault for what I perceive to be a lackluster selection of content. Making a good mod is gonna take a lot of time. And at the end of the day, you can't always expect people are gonna be willing to put in that time for absolutely nothing in return, just to keep the game on life support. Bone Labs misses every possible mark that Boneworks filled out for it. The game makes for a decent sandbox, however it feels less fluent than the first game, the story mode is dry, its newly introduced mechanics are presented half-heartedly, its bonus content is either unnotable or straight up ripped from the first game, and not even the modding community can bail it out. I'm gonna give this one a 6 out of 10. As far as recommendations go, I take no joy in saying that I can't bring myself to do so. The content is simply not there, and while the developers promise to carry out more updates to flesh out the game and modding tools, it's been a year and they've just been very uncommunicative. They've only officially addressed the Steam community three times, one of those to ask for a Game Award nomination. Their Discord and Twitter, you know, platforms used for the specific purpose of easier communication with the community, uh, that's pretty much gone radio silent as well. At this point, all people really want to know is, is this game still being worked on or has it been abandoned? And to be fair, maybe they are still working on the game behind the scenes, they're just dog water at PR. But on the other hand, the game could just be dead. All that's really being left is just an overpriced sandbox. And with that in mind, how could I possibly recommend this game? That being said, if you're gonna buy it regardless of this review, fine. But obviously, I highly recommend waiting for a sale. As of now, I'd say this game's only worth $20, maybe less. Although, I've yet to see prices go underneath $32. So yeah, it might be a while before this game becomes worth it. But hey, I guess the game has a price where it's theoretically worth it. So that's gotta count for something, I guess. Otherwise, if you're looking for Bone Labs, but better, check out Bone Works. As I said before, I feel that the overall gameplay is a little smooth around the edges, but the campaign is so much better. It has most of the game modes from Bone Lab, the sandbox is much of the same, it can even be modded to an extent, and you know, it, it's cheaper. We will probably review that game in the future, so stay tuned. And of course, if Bone Labs does get updated, we will do our due jil- we will do our due jil- we will do our due diligence and update this review down the line. But that's all we've got for our Bone Labs review. Now, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You've just watched a review from the Jetavision. If you like what you see and you want to keep up to date with our game and movie reviews, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac Chista, formerly Conquista Media, now Jetavision, signing out. You all have a good one.